Hi fam and welcome to a new video. Today I am doing a dedicated review of this book that is The Good Girls by Sonia Filero. This is a book that is a true crime a book that was published just this year um, and I said that I was going to read this in my Feb TBR and a bunch of you said that you'd want a dedicated review for this one. So here I am, your wish is my command. Um, but essentially this book follows um, this crime that took place in 2014 in the um, in Katra in the Badaun district of Uttar Pradesh which is just a few hours away from the nation's capital where these two girls were found hanging from a tree um, and I didn't remember too much about this case to be honest I remember the image that was being circulated of these two girls on the internet and I remember that it was really close to uh, Jyoti Singh's um, rape case which is the Nirbhaya rape case and I remember being really scared scared um, and just horrified at, at what was happening um, and and I think that's all I remember from that time to be honest and it's probably a good thing that I don't remember too much about the case itself because um, Sonia Falero just does such an amazing job of just telling us about it and everything that kind of took place um, but yeah first let me tell you what exactly the crime was essentially what happens is that um, Lali and Padma are two girls who are 16 and 14 years old and they one night go to defecate in the farms because there are no toilets there but they just go and do their business in the farms um, and basically they don't come back um, and then the uh, there is a search party that is sent out and there is there are rumors of this boy from a village across who uh, called Papu who may have kidnapped them um, and all of that is kind of taking place through the night but in the morning they find uh, their two bodies basically hanging from this tree and that is what happened. The case itself was nuts because initially people thought that it was a caste-based murder, then they thought it was a gang rape and a murder, and then they thought that it was probably an honor killing. So there was just a lot of things going on. Um, and this is because that it was handled really shortly by uh, the police. Uh, the CBI was then called in. But overall, there were just so many unreliable witnesses. Um, there were people who were going against against each other in their witness statements and it just kind of didn't make sense to a lot of people um like everything was kind of tampered with it it was a shit show essentially um and what Sonia Filaro does is tells you chronologically what happened what I think Sonia Filaro did really really well in this book was that she not only chronologically put everything together so that you could see where exactly things were not adding up um you were seeing how the systems in our government were sort of messing up and you were feeling frustrated about that but more than just telling us just about the crime she was telling you about the people and the society and the way that they function what they think their thoughts and the politics and all of this is important because it adds to you understanding why all of this was kind of taking place so if you're expecting this book to be just cut and dry about the case this book is not for you this book goes into the history into cases that have shaped what then what the procedures that took place in this case it just had so many interesting tidbits um that i know that some people might find irrelevant or that it is straying from what was actually happening in the case but i personally found that really really interesting um and just very well done so the cases that she brought up were very relevant to the case i felt um so for example she brought up the nirbhaya rape case which made you understand why there were so many um fast track courts that were then um, put into place or why there were like rape centers that had suddenly popped up throughout um the nation um and then she also brought up this case of this um night that happened in 1972 and i'm going to refer to my phone here which shaped laws which moved rape away from the victim blaming if she had been sexually active in the past 
to saying that if a woman alleges that she had been raped then she should be taken at her word and to have also increased the punishment of custodial rape which is if she was sexually assaulted while in custody of the police and yes it not only gave you relevance to the case in terms of the way the laws turned out but also in terms of cases that kind of shaped um, how we thought of people as and how we thought as a society but apart from these cases it also gave you an understanding of other things like for example when the CBI w got involved in the case it also gave you an understanding of what the CBI was and how it was formed and how it is governed and gave you like snippets from like ex-directors of the CBI and what they think of the functioning of the CBI currently because as they say in the book that it is uh, a department which is very much led by the ruling powers um, and the ruling party if that makes sense and all of these may seem like diversions or things that may not be relevant to the case at hand but to me i thought that this was important because it gave you an understanding of our society and how we have come to be but apart from these cases and everything that took place and, and the things that she kind of informed us about, she also kind of informed us about society in the rural areas, which is so different from the way um, we were brought up in urban cities. Um, so for example, things like um, a mobile phone was not really given to girls because they didn't want them to um, talk to other boys unless they try to figure out who they want to marry or get um, their own independence or that girls were encouraged to study till grade 8 um, because it added a sheen to them so that they could get a better husband when they um, are grown up enough to get married. And then there were other things that were touched upon like for example the post-mortem of the girls was not done by a doctor but by a sweeper who had been doing this for so many years he's been doing it for 20 years because one there weren't enough allocations of doctors to this part of the country and two this was just a caste based thing because back in the day people would just not be comfortable upper caste people would not think that it was their uh, duty or they would feel dirtied or sullied by doing jobs like post-mortems so they gave it to the Dalits to do. And then other than that there was just so much of research that Sonia Falero clearly did because small things like giving you a background to people's characters and like characters that weren't as such so important. For example, the uh, first person who broke the news of this case, we were told of what he was doing at that point of time and what he updated his Facebook status. And all of this may seem a little irrelevant, but to me, I thought that was really interesting because we got to understand also how the news agencies work um, and what exactly they're thinking. And that was really eye-opening for me. I also really appreciated the fact that she wrote some of the dialogue and the things that people were saying um, in Hindi um, and then translated it for us. So, um, which for people who would understand what they were saying, I think that it, it meant so much because there are certain things that can't really be translated or if, even if they are translated, the idea doesn't really fully come across and, and for people who understand it, it just kind of made a lot of sense. Um, and also there were like these little catchphrases or things or um, colloquialisms or slangs that um, people would say, like for example, the superintendent of police said things like, um, oh, I didn't do Colgate today, which was his way of saying that I didn't even brush my teeth uh, before coming to this case. And, and those were things that I also found really, really interesting that she kind of put into the book. Um, and it just had this sort of authenticity that came through um, with that. But back to the book, um, I really, really enjoyed my time reading this book. I thought that it was very fast paced and it went by really fast. There were these short chapters as well that kind of helped you go through it really fast. Um, and I do think that in the end it a little bit fell flat but that I don't think is the problem with the author but with the case itself and how it kind of turned out um, and yeah so I don't think that that was really problematic to me uh, but overall I would really really recommend this book. I think that it does a great job in not only talking to you about the case itself but also informing you and um, educating you about India, the society, um, laws and just everything that kind of happens in it um, and I, I really really liked this book.
I would like to read out a part from the author's note um, which I thought was just really relevant to just wrap up this review um, and she says this is a story about women in modern India but it is also about what it means to be poor. India is changing. Some say it is rapidly modernizing. Yet for the poor who have always suffered the most, India hasn't changed at all that much. In villages like Katra, just a few hours outside the nation's capital, people now have phones but they do not have toilets. Women have some education but they are forbidden from working. Fear of social ostracism and mob justice forces people to waive their rights. They are held back and sometimes they keep others back too. No one is in a position to reach their full potential. So that's all from me folks from today. Um, I will be coming back to you with more book reviews. Um, if there is a book that you definitely want me to recommend or like review, let me know down in the comments down below. Um, also let me know what you thought of this review and what you thought of this book. If you are going to pick it up, if you have read this, uh, just let's discuss it down below in the comments. And uh, if you have any more true crime um, recommendations based in India or other Otherwise, do let me know I would actually love to read that and uh, that's all from me thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye